Hello Grade 11s, in this lesson we will work with nominal and effective interest rates. Before we do some calculations, let's join Vusi and his teacher as they explore these two interest rates. Now, how can I help you? I have a thousand rand that I want to invest towards my further education. What interest rates can you give me? This account offers you 15% interest rate per annum. Does that mean I'll get 15% added on to my thousand rand at the end of the year? Actually, we calculate the interest monthly. That's great news for you, Gussie. The bank offers you 15%, but when we work it out at a monthly rate, it actually works out to more than 15%. That's right. We don't usually explain this to our customers, but I can see that you want to know everything about how this account works. So 15% is our nominal rate, and it's compounded monthly. Nominal rate? Now I'm lost. Don't worry, I'll explain it later. Rochelle, thanks for your time. We'll go and do our homework on this one. Can we use one of your offices? Sure, no problem. Just remember, you have to give us 32 days notice before you can withdraw any money. Okay, thank you. That suits me fine. It starts me from using my money for other things. The rate the bank says it is giving you is called the nominal rate because it isn't the actual interest rate. The actual percentage increase on your money that you get is called the effective interest rate. Because of the way the interest is calculated, these two rates are not always the same. And that is what we want to investigate in this lesson. We want to see what the difference is between a nominal interest rate and an effective interest rate. And to do this, we need to work with interest that is compounded daily or monthly and compare this with the interest that is compounded yearly. So the bank has offered you 15% interest at a nominal rate, and they say it will be compounded monthly. A compounding interval is the interval or time period for calculating interest. The interest is compounded or calculated on each new amount, not on the original amount. In other words, it's compound interest. In this example, compounded monthly means that interest is worked out every month, not only at the end of the year. That sounds good to me. That means my money is being added to every month. What about the nominal rate? Nominal interest is the interest as an annual rate. So if the interest is worked out annually, this would be the nominal interest rate. But there's something I don't understand. If we calculate the monthly interest, how does the annual interest help us? Surely we need to know the monthly interest rate. Yes, we do, but the bank doesn't give you that rate. But we can work out the monthly rate using the information we have. How many times will we calculate interest each year? I guess 12 times because it's 12 months in a year. That's right. To get the monthly rate, we just divide the annual rate by 12. So the rate each month is 1,25%. Now, can you calculate the amount you will have on your 1,000 rand after one month? Can we still use the same compound interest formula? We certainly can. But remember, since we are compounding monthly, I will be the monthly rate of 1,25%. In the formula, we need to write that as a fraction of 100. So I is 0, 0, 0,0125. Okay, P is 1,000. And for one month, N will just be 1. I can do this. I put the values into the formula like this. I'll start in the bracket. 1 plus this is 1, 0, 0,0125. To the power of 1 doesn't change that. Times by 1,000 is 1,012,5. I can do this whole calculation without the calculator. So. After one month, my investment has earned me 12 rand 50. Now, let's see what happens after two months. I just need to change the value of n in the formula to two, right? That's the idea. This time I think I'll use the calculator. 1 comma 0, 1, 2, 5 squared, and then times 1,000 is 1,025 comma 1, 6. Excellent. We can use the same formula to find out how much interest your money has earned up to any month of the year. Let's go straight to the last month of the year. I want to know how much money I'll have after a year. Okay. So n will be 12 this time. That's 1, 0, 1, 2, 5, x to the y key, 12, and then times 1,000. I get 1,160 rand 75. So over a year, my investment will earn about 160 rand without me doing anything. That's only if you don't withdraw anything during the year, remember. But do you think we'll come to the same answer if we work out yearly interest on your investment? 
In other words, if we have the same interest rate but work out the interest only once in the year, will we get the same answer? So you mean I must work out 15% of 1,000 Rand? I don't think I'll have as much. But let's see. P is 1,000 again. The yearly rate is 15%, so that's 0, 0,15. We want the value after one year, so N is 1. Now, I substitute the values into the formula and I'll get 1,150 Rand. I thought so. This is less than when we calculated the interest each month, even though the time and the rates are the same. I think you've hit the rand on the head, but what conclusion can we draw from this? I'd say the more often you calculate interest in a year, the more money you land up with. So you're suggesting that the smaller your compounding interval is, the more interest you earn? I think so. Let's test this idea. We'll use the same example, but we'll change the compounding interval. How much will you earn on your money if the interest is compounded on a quarterly basis? Does quarterly mean you divide the year into four? Yes. So the interest will be calculated at the end of every three months during a year. The first thing we need is a quarterly interest rate. Correct. The interest rate must always show how often compounding takes place. If we calculate the interest four times a year, we need to divide 15 by 4. So, the quarterly interest rate is 3,75%, and that will be 0, 0,0375. P is still 1,000, and N is 4. Substituting into the compound interest formula, I get 1,158,65. Now, let's compare these results in a table. You are right. The smaller the compounding interval, the more interest you'll get. But the difference between these amounts isn't very much. That's true for this example. But if you started with an investment of thousands, the number of times the interest is calculated would make a big difference to the final amount. It's still confusing that these three amounts were calculated using an interest rate of 15%. You're right. If we take the interest for each amount and work them out as a percentage, do you think they'll all be 15%? They can't all be the same percentage increase, surely. Let's work them out. For the first one, the increase is 150 Rand. To find that as a percentage, we need to make it a fraction out of 1,000 and multiply by 100. So this one is 15%. That's the same as the nominal interest rate we started with. Yes, but we can expect that because the interest rate is calculated only once in the year. Now let's work out the percentage increase for when we compound quarterly. Okay. This time the interest is 158 rand and 65 cents. So we divide it by 1,000 rands and times by 100 to get percent. And that gets me 15,87%. Right, so it's more than 15%. Now let's work out the percentage increase for the monthly amount. Okay. I get 16,08%. Good. Now if we compare these three percentages, what conclusion can we draw? When the compounding is annual, the percentage increase is the same as the nominal rate of interest we were given. But if we compound more often, then the percentage increase is greater than the nominal rate of increase. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. This is why banks use two kinds of interest. Nominal interest rate and effective interest rate. The percentage increase over the course of one year is known as the effective rate. Effective used here means the rate you are actually getting. In other words, the rate that you are in effect getting. So the effective rate, when the amount is compounded monthly, is 16,08%, but the nominal rate is still 15%. Let me get this straight. If I'm given the nominal interest rate and the compounding interval is less than a year, this isn't the percentage increase I can expect on my money. Is it? No. The effective interest rate tells you the actual percentage increase you'll get on your money. So if the bank offers you 15% interest, you can ask them if they're offering this as a nominal interest rate or as an effective interest rate. Also, ask them what compounding interval is used. Unless the compounding interval is one year, the effective rate will work out to be higher than the nominal rate. Thanks, I'll do that. That was a very good explanation of the difference between nominal and effective interest rates. We can use a formula to convert between these two. It looks a little confusing, but don't be alarmed, you will be able to cope. 1 plus the effective interest rate 
equals open brackets 1 plus the nominal interest rate divided by n close brackets to the power of n. In the formula, IF is the effective interest rate, I nom is the nominal interest rate, and N is the number of times the money is compounded in one year. Let's have a look at an example of converting to an effective interest rate if the nominal interest rate is given. Convert a nominal interest rate of 18% per annum compounded monthly to an annual effective rate. First write down the formula. The nominal interest rate is equal to 0, 0,18 and n is equal to 12. 1 plus the effective interest rate is equal to, in brackets, 1 plus 0, 0,18 divided by 12 to the power of 12. Next, we subtract 1 from both sides. This means that the effective rate equals, open brackets, 1 plus 0, 0,18 over 12, close brackets, to the power of 12, minus 1. Using a calculator, we find the annual effective rate is equal to 0, 0,1956, which is equal to 19,56%. Now we are going to do the opposite. We will convert an effective interest rate into a nominal interest rate. Convert an annual effective interest rate of 13,5% per annum to a nominal interest rate per annum compounded semi-annually. We start the calculation with the formula. The effective interest rate is equal to 0, 0,135 and n is equal to 2. 1 plus 0, 0,135 is equal to, open brackets, 1 plus the nominal interest rate over 2, close brackets, to the power of 2. We add the numbers on the left and get 1, 0,135. Now we square root both sides of the equation. This means that 1, 0,636 is equal to 1 plus the nominal interest rate over 2. We subtract 1 from both sides and find that 0, 0,06536 is equal to the nominal interest rate divided by 2. We multiply both sides by 2 and find that the nominal interest rate is equal to 0, 0,1370. This means that the nominal interest rate equals 13,7%. Thank you for joining us. Practice what you have learned by doing the questions in the Finance, Growth and Decay task video. You'll also be able to learn more about finance on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. You'll only earn your interest if you take an interest. Goodbye.